Over the past two years, we have seen a ton of major movies get pushed, get shelved, and get delayed left and right. But one film that has been tossed around for the past two years that I have really been looking forward to is Samaritan. As someone who has really been feeling the superhero fatigue lately, you throw Sylvester Stallone's name on the poster, oh yeah, you got my attention. What's up guys and welcome to my review of Samaritan. This is going to be debuting tomorrow on Prime Video, so keep your eyes peeled if you are interested in this. This is a film that has been delayed for almost two years. It was originally supposed to release in like November, December of 2020. Obviously a lot of things that were supposed to be uh, released that year has been pushed and this is one that's just been cycled around and talked about and rumored and then eventually Amazon purchased it and it became a streaming service exclusive. Now I'll be honest, I am not nearly as interested or as excited about comic book and superhero films being released as I used to be, but when you add in the fact that this is an original IP, this is not based off of anything from Marvel or DC, you throw Sylvester Stallone into the lead role, and you tell me that it's directed by the guy who made Overlord, which was actually a really cool surprise the year that that was released, this shaped up to be a movie that I was increasingly more interested in the more that I heard about it. I was lucky enough to check this thing out a couple of days early, and now let's talk about the good the bad and the ugly of Sylvester Stallone's Samaritan. Starting off with the positives, first of all, I just love Sylvester Stallone. Him, Arnold Schwarzenegger, all those heroes of my childhood, I will never not be interested in what those guys are doing. Even if they're doing something that's very basic and expected and kind of run of the mill for what you would expect them to do, I'm never not going to enjoy that on some level. And so when you put Sylvester Stallone, who is still in peak physical condition, uh, is a guy that continues to stretch his act in the Ability and continues to impress me. When you stick him in a role like this as this grizzled ex-superhero, I think that it brings a really interesting dynamic to this movie that otherwise would not be there without somebody of the star power of Sylvester Stallone. It's an interesting and fairly unique role for him to take on. I think that there's certain shades to his character that uh, is something we don't see from him very often. There's like this internal anger and rage that he's got bottled up that kind of comes out in certain scenes in the film that I think is among the angrier that we've seen Sylvester Stallone characters. He tends to be a little bit more of a even keeled mood kind of person. So I liked seeing the different shades to what he was able to bring to the character of Samaritan. Of course, the physicality of the role and even some of the physical comedy there, I think that he nails very well. Are you okay? I'm cool. And so the element of this film that interested me the most ended up being the thing that I will remember it for the most. Aside from that, it is a bit of a breath of fresh air to be able to watch a superhero comic book storyline that is not a part of the MCU or not a part of the ever-changing and ever-evolving DC universe, whatever the hell they're doing nowadays. I like the fact that we can have something unique like this that's telling a new IP, it's telling a new story, there's no lore or comic book ties or anything like that to walk in with any kind of preconceived expectations or preconceived notions. You just sit down and watch a classic good versus evil story. And it was relieving to be able to watch a film in this subgenre without having to have tons of previous knowledge of the universe or trying to pay attention to all the Easter eggs that's going to be important for the next three years of movies. Movies. Don't get me wrong, I love the MCU when they're good, I love the DC when they're good, but it does get a little bit exhausting having to always participate in these greater universes when sometimes I just want a nice, classic, simple story. Overall, guys, I think that the target audience of this movie, for the most part, is going to be pleased enough with this movie. It's middle of the road, it's three-ish stars, it's a very solid, entertaining experience. If you're somebody that likes old, classic standalone superhero films. If you're somebody that loves Stallone and that was what brought you into this, I think more people than not are gonna enjoy what they're given here. But do not walk into this film expecting anything more than that. It's not something that transcends the genre. It's not something that's gonna kick off this huge blockbuster franchise. It's not something that's gonna be this gigantic mainstay of Sylvester Stallone's career. It's a solid enough two hour superhero film. And as long as you walk in with the correct expectations, I think your expectations will be met. Now the reason I say all of that is because I am mostly positive on this film, but that's really all I have to say in the positive. I have much more to elaborate on with my issues and disappointments with the film, but overall, 
I am positive on it. As far as the mixed, I'll say that the main character of the kid, Sam, and the performance by Javon Walton, he was fine. He was not great. He was not terrible. I tend to be pretty easy on uh, child actors because they're child actors. I mean, I, I try to be fair with that. But in a year where we've had some really outstanding child performances, like in Black Phone and even things like The Atom Project, I don't think that he is... One of the performances this year that's going to stand out for certain, he could go on to do better things. Of course, the kid's going to learn very early in his career, but uh, the character himself, I think, is a little bit redundant of the character in Last Action Hero, first of all. I mean, you got this kid that views Samaritan as like his life-defining hero. He wants to be him. He wants to learn from him. He wants to replicate all of his moves and his moral code. And so it felt a little bit beat by beat of that relationship in that film, Last Action Hero. But there are scenes where he has decent chemistry with Stallone. There are scenes that I enjoyed their back and forth and their kind of father-son type relationship that buds. But there's also a lot of scenes that I just felt like he was way too smiley and way too jovial for the situations that was actually going on in the film. So that was a little bit of a disconnect for me to where I felt like it should have been a bit darker, a bit demanding of the darker side of his personality when he just seemed way too lighthearted for the things that he was involved in. There wasn't near as much action as I would have expected from this premise, especially having Stallone in the lead role and even from what the trailer seemed to suggest. And that's part of the reason why I say it actually works really well for a streaming service film and doesn't really demand a big theater uh, experience because the action is fairly sparing throughout this film. It's much more of uh, exploring the relationship between the kid and Samaritan and exploring the, the way that the city has responded to the past hero and villain and the lack of a hero and villain, things like that. And so I, I think that when you have Stallone in the lead role and you, you see his strengths throughout the, his career that they could have done a little bit better at putting a bit more interesting action in here as well as a bit more action. Really? The action that we do get is fine. It's serviceable. There is some, some decent hand-to-hand -hand fighting for a superhuman character of taking out a bunch of humans that just... I wish it could have gone a little bit bigger. So moving on to the negatives of Samaritan, one of the biggest ones is that I hated the villain in this film. I didn't think he was interesting. I didn't think he was entertaining. I didn't think that there was anything really particularly alluring about him or stand out about him. And there's so much of the screen time that is dedicated to this guy. I would say it's almost like 60, 40, 60 Stallone, 40 this douchebag. And there was just no point where anything regarding his plan, his motivations, his personality stood out as somebody that I was entertained watching. There was also this disconnect that I had to where this is a human character that uh, is trying to go up against somebody that is very clearly established as having superhuman strength and superhuman healing ability and everything like that. And so even when it gets to the third act of the film and these two characters are coming to blows and you know they have the big showdown, I never bought it for a second that Sylvester Stallone wasn't just snapping this guy in half within two seconds and so the drawn out third act regarding their final showdown it just never felt right to me while it's only about 10 to 15 seconds of screen time this film has one of the worst examples of de-aging technology that i've ever seen it straight up looked like something from the early 2000s to me i just don't think the de-aging thing it, we're not there yet guys like for the amount of movies that keep trying to do this i really hate it when it happens it just creates this horrible uncanny valley that I see what you're trying to do, but you could just stick that actor's face in there and try to clean it up with makeup. It's gonna be more convincing than this fucking PS2 character that you're trying to get me to look at right now. But the biggest issue with the film, the biggest missed opportunity with Samaritan is that it introduces a lot of interesting ideas that would be unique among this subgenre, that would make this stand out amongst the plethora of comic book and superhero films that we get every single year, but it doesn't take any effort or time to really explore any of those things. There's character arcs, there's character motivations, there's interesting things regarding the world that we're in, this granite city and how they view the heroes and villains of the past and how they're all split, almost like a political thing to where some people side with the villain and some people side with the hero. And 
There's so many things that are introduced that could be interesting to make this stand out, but they're just dabbled. They're just thrown in there for a moment just to kind of set the stage. And what we're actually given is fairly run of the mill. And so it doesn't really exist very well as a standalone film. It doesn't exist very well even as a first film of a possible franchise. It just feels like there's so many things in here that are left unexplored that by the end of it, you kind of have movie blue balls. Now I'm about to get into something that some of you might consider knocking on the door of spoilers. I really don't think it's that big of a reveal, but if you're somebody that doesn't want to know any details whatsoever of this film, this is something you're going to want to just go ahead and skip to the rating. But I think most of you will be fine with this information. So to the point that I just made, there is a reveal in the third act of this film that is hinted at and is very directly and clearly set up and built upon with these flashback scenes throughout the first two acts of the film. And to me, it was a gigantic mistake to take that information and frame it as a third act reveal. It would have been so much more interesting and so much better for the film to just give us that information in the first act of the movie and spend the rest of the film actually developing that idea and exploring that idea and expanding upon what that information means for the universe that we have been introduced to and for the characters that we have spent all the time with in this film. I think that it did the movie and the characters a gigantic disservice and was again a big missed opportunity to take that information and try to frame it as this big aha moment that for me was not surprising whatsoever, was one of the most telegraphed third act reveals that I've seen in recent memory. And it would have been so much more of an interesting movie that would have stood out among the rest of the movies in this subgenre if they had spent the runtime actually exploring that information. It was to the point where, I'm not gonna exaggerate, two to three minutes into this film, I saw exactly what they were hinting at and exactly what they were going for. And I held back my disappointment and frustration thinking that, okay, as long as they don't leave that lingering for the rest of the film, like that's gonna be a surprise, I'll be okay. That's a really interesting idea to explore. And unfortunately, they did exactly what I feared they were going to do. Overall, guys, like I said before, if you are somebody that was interested in this movie to see Stallone play a superhero, I think more people are going to enjoy it for that than the people that won't. This is honestly a film that I think Stallone is really the only thing that makes this interesting. If it was anybody else, this would be quickly dismissed and forgotten about, but it is interesting for his fans to see him do something like this. So walk in with the right expectations and I think that most of you will enjoy it for what it is. Well, that's it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed this review, please click over here for the rest of my 2022 new release reviews. And I'm also going to put my playlist up here of all of my MCU reviews. If you guys are a fan of the superhero genre, please like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything in the future. And as always, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.